Louisiana Beer Reviews, Cajun Fire, Big Queen, Juicy Porter, 6.7% alcohol by volume. This is a one pint can made in the USA and it is brewed and bottled by Beltway Brewing of Sterling, Virginia for Cajun Fire Brewing of New Orleans, Louisiana, who has still not opened a brewery. Oh, and I don't think they ever will. They just have a business. Okay, uh, and it's got a little logo for Beltway Brewing, and you could check out their website. They might only do um, contract brewing. I'm not sure if they have their own brands. Queen Dawn of the Washita Nations Tribe Black Masking Traditions of New Orleans. So there's Queen Dawn. Okay. Behold this big queen, aromatic, shape-shifting, exceptionally smooth mouthfeel, delicate lacing, porter with blackberries and molasses. So it literally is a juicy porter that, because it has blackberry, blackberries in it, juice uh, and molasses. But it doesn't say just juice, says the berries. Okay, so. Um, bought this at Trader Joe's and a guy said yeah it just came in about a week ago and but it looks like it's saying 07522 is that the 75th day of 2022 at 10 22 a.m. and 40 seconds I don't know I hope not I mean why would it take that long you know why would it take a year to show up at Trader Joe's over a year so it makes no sense but that the heat they had two new ones from Cajun Fire Of course, I could be reading that code incorrectly. This is the first video review for this beer in the world. There's one check-in on uh, Beer Advocate, literally one, and there's a handful on Untap. Give it a, if I recall right, a good score, like, you know, good. Okay, um, has a beige head, be thicker and a narrower glass. This is a reddish brown very dark brown appearance all right and uh, they have been contracted with Beltway Brewing for a number of years now so you get a lot of these breweries they breweries brewing companies that just own the brands but they have somebody else make it for them Paps being the biggest Paps Brewing Company um, But like Mississippi Mud, that's made by FX Matt Saranac Brewing up there in Utica, New York. But um, I think there's a headquarters for Mississippi Mud somewhere in Mississippi, like northern North Mississippi. It's like an office, probably in a storefront office. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. If they don't have the money to brew their own, and they're letting FX Max FX Matt brew it for probably 30 years now 25 years and people like it eh, fine I like the I like the here sirens get a little Rex around here I like the um, Mississippi mud that black and tan comes in a nice I think it's 500 milliliter uh, looks like old ceramic jug bottle um, you get the pint cans now, uh, maybe on draft some places. But um, when we were at FX Matt in 2016, we saw pallets of the cans stacked ready to be shipped. So that was interesting. <clears throat> uh, McKellar is another big one. I think that uh, only does, uh, they pay people that brew their beer. They call it a gypsy brewer. Um, FX. Um, McKellar and maybe Evil Twin also. It smells like um, dark bread crust. Let's see, it's got molasses. They don't say if it's dark, medium, or light molasses. We know it's blackberries. Those grow around here in abundance. It's got like a chocolate note though. Could be from chocolate malt. So 
blackberries, molasses. Um, not really picking that up on the on the aroma. Let's go with the taste. Cheers. Yeah, I'm getting like chocolate and vanilla. I guess I could be coming from molasses. They're using black strap. It's thin body like a porter tends to be, like low medium, but heading toward just thin body. Um, I, I think I can pick out a little blueberry in it for the big queen. Um, it's a clear cylindrical can with the paper adhesive label. Um, but keep saying uh because I'm like kind of halted by this if what because what I'm saying is if you didn't tell me that it had blackberry and I hadn't read that on the label I wouldn't really talk about blackberry some of those fruited beers are like that it'd be such a little bit if you don't know about it you're not gonna pick it up like the great grape Fruit sculpting from Ballas Point when I first tried that in 2015. Michael Komarov kept saying, Do you notice something else in the IPA? And I was like, No, no. Then he showed me the can. Oh, grapefruit. See, I wasn't detecting it. I mean, I know it now. Uh, like this peaches and cream from um, this cream liqueur from Jacques Pennsylvania Dutch peaches and cream. Yeah, I could barely pick up the peaches and I know they're in there, but if somebody just gave it to me, Without any pre prior information, I might just say it tastes like a cream liqueur. <laughs> and that's how this is working out. So sweetness, yeah. two and a half out of five hop cones. Two and a half out of five hop cones. I don't know what the IBUs are. They had them listed on uh, untapped. But uh, there's nothing on this can, and there's definitely nothing on the website. They don't even list it. Like, there is no website. You, you type in the website, but then it just shows a, um, social media links, like Facebook. And then on their Facebook page, uh, they show nothing about this beer. They don't mention it. So you, you could say there's no website listing. Um, there may be some distributors that have a listing for it with the IBU, but shown, but I couldn't find any official IBU. So on the nose, you get that chocolate malt, that dark bread crust, brown bread crust. Get some like mineral or metallic hops. Bitterness is very low. I'm thinking IBU is around 20. On the number, the real world, it's yeah. Well, it's two out of five hop cones. So two and a half for the sweet, two and a two for the bitter. It's a dry finish. It's pretty good beer. It's kind of bland though, but um, hmm. I should have saved my receipt for Trader Joe's, but I think it was low. Like you know, it was. I think it was less than two dollars for this can I didn't really pay I didn't pay attention to the price when I bought everything over there which was not much because they never really have much over there I mean Trader Joe's does carry a good amount of Louisiana craft beers okay like a lot from Great Raft in Shreveport and some of Bita's and second line brewing but they don't carry different stuff too much it's like you could go to Trader Joe's Four months later, go again, same stuff. Then you go four months later, it's the same stuff. It's always the same stuff. So, I mean, that's it. But then I went there, and I was like, oh, same old thing. Whoa! And then I saw these two from um, Cajun Fire. So, yeah. So, since I don't remember the price, that means it was low, because I would have otherwise remembered it. So, it's definitely almost like a purple. And that must be coming from the Blackberry. This is definitely like a purple note to it. All right, so the final score, nice lacing, splotchy lacing. Um, I think.
think if it warms more, it'll be better. I'm starting to pick up that molasses, but like again, once again, I know it's in there. I think a B is a fair score. It's good. I think that's what most of their beers have been coming out to, about a B, good, if I recall. So it's a good beer. There's a honey one they make. Um, you can look on Beer Advocate. They list them as only about six. Um, yeah, good. So 84 out of 100. A good beer. Don't go searching for it, but if you run across it and it's a good, good Trader Joe's price, definitely pick it up, definitely. So I'll be, next time I come back on a review, I'll check out the other Cajun Fire beer that I bought. So Laissez Le Bon Temps Relay, a good beer, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all go to Sterling, Virginia, and take a brewery tour.